this man, this former MP who is now a lord, someone who is supposed to be the pillar of our society, raped children. He raped children. Take one. Wait till that bit of traffic goes by. Now, if we start with the picture in Crossbow that uh, is alleged to have caused Sir Cyril so much trouble without him having actually seen it, um, were you as editor directly responsible for it being on the cover? Oh, yes. Now, what was the purpose of it? Is it circulation? Certainly, we thought it might help, and it seems to have done, too. The 30-year rule of publishing cabinet papers has now gone, got to be examined, and the conduct of the Home Secretary in directing police and courts has now got to be disclosed. And by the way, the current expose of Sir Lee in Britain, the then Home Secretary with accusations of improper conduct with children, will not come as a surprise. The Home Office has admitted it didn't keep a dossier given to the department 30 years ago, alleging that paedophiles were operating in and around Westminster in the 1980s. The documents were presented by the late Conservative MP Geoffrey Dickens to Leon Britton, who was the then Home Secretary. Lord Britton says he handed it to his civil servants to investigate, it was passed on to the appropriate authorities, and the matter was dealt with properly. The Labour MP for Rochdale, Simon Dunchak, has campaigned for the contents of the dossier to be made public, and I asked him what he thought was in it. We aren't sure what's in it because we can't see the dossier. We think and believe from relatives of Geoffrey Dickens and from what Geoffrey Dickens said at the time that he clearly implicated alleged perpetrators, child abusers, in that dossier and presented that to the then Home Secretary, Leon Britton, asking him to take action. So that's as much as we know what is concerning is that the Home Office have recently come out and said that the dossier has been destroyed. Friends say Lord Britain, who was recently caught in a row over allegations that he failed to act on evidence of child abuse by senior figures in Westminster in the 1980s. Hang on a second, let's be honest, he wasn't caught up in a row about it, was he? He didn't just chip in and wish he hadn't opened his mouth. He was the centre player in allegedly covering up for a Westminster paedophile ring. This man... This former MP, who is now a lord, someone who is supposed to be the pillar of our society, raped children. He raped children. Sir Greville Janner, uh, Lord Janner, um, who uh, has a history of paedophilia, uh, on three separate occasions that he wasn't charged despite evidence, and once again, we see the hand of the establishment in covering up for people in power. Uh, we've seen how Sir Leon Britton, for example, uh, Sir Cyril Smith, and uh, in fact many, many others yet to be named have been involved in these um, events. Don't forget Jimmy Savile was a darling of the establishment and the media told us for many years what a fabulous man he was. This is a disgrace. An absolute disgrace and gives even more credence to the fact that Jana is 100% an establishment cover-up. Maybe this is something that the left and right can actually agree on. I don't sign up for the left and right nonsense, I'm beyond that. I know that one is as the other, divide and conquer. But even this, I think, will bring the left and right together. Lord Janner voted 203 times in Parliament despite dementia. Former Labour MP Lord Janner granted power of attorney over decisions about his health to two of his children in April 2009, XRO has established. But since then, and despite a diagnosis of dementia that year, Janner has voted 203 times in the House of Lords, in addition, he attended the House of Lords on 603 days during this time, claiming over £104,000 in allowances. Exaro today disclosed details of Janna's busy schedule in the House of Lords, 
raising fresh questions about his claims of severe dementia and adding to the pressure on Alison Saunders, Director of Public Prosecutions, for refusing to prosecute the former Labour MP or pursue a trial of the facts over allegations against him of child sex abuse. Jana always denies claims that he was a paedophile, although Saunders accepts that there is sufficient evidence to charge Jana on 22 counts of sexually abusing nine boys. She said last month that he was too ill with dementia to be prosecuted. According to a statement, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2009. This man, this former MP who is now a lord, someone who is supposed to be the pillar of our society, raped children. He raped children. The evidence file used to convict paedophile Peter Wrighton, if it still exists, contains clear, clear intelligence of a widespread paedophile ring. One of its members boasts of his links to a senior aide of a former Prime Minister, who says he could smuggle indecent images of children from abroad. The leads were not followed up, but if the files still exist, I want to ensure that the Metropolitan Police secure the evidence, re-examine it, and investigate clear intelligence. Hot water over allegations that it attempted to sweep under the rug the arrest of a close aide of the Prime Minister over a child pornography probe. The official, part of whose role was to advise online porn filters, was reportedly warned that police were investigating him hours before he was detained. Ortiz Laura Smith has the details. His name is uh, Patrick Rock, and he is in fact, though, a veteran Conservative Party uh, advisor, David Cameron's deputy chief of staff. He's been called Cameron's fixer, and he's had what one might call unparalleled access to, access to power over a, a very long time, over the last four decades, right there in the heart of government. Um, the irony lies in the fact that he's also been closely involved in drawing up government policy on uh, internet pornography filters and this is a man who was rest arrested uh, recently on suspicion of uh, what everybody's calling an offence related to child abuse images so not just pornography uh, but what appears to be child pornography now his arrest happened on February the 12th and he then resigned but this was all on the quiet Downing Street appears to have covered it up until it was confronted with it uh, now so for the last three weeks no one's known anything about this but apart from the Prime Minister, who apparently has known for three weeks. He said he was very concerned that the matter should be handled correctly, that he didn't want to brief preemptively on a criminal investigation against a member of his staff. Um, but his critics, who are mainly uh, Labour members of Parliament, so opposition, say that this raises a number of questions. For example, what level of security uh, did Patrick Rock have? Is there other stuff that we don't know about? It's also emerged, by the way, that Rock had previously been accused of sexual harassment, which was dealt with by his boss at Downing Street, so a political figure rather than a civil servant figure, not very usual. So again, some sort of oddity going on there. The Prime Minister is being accused of a cover-up, and his Labour critics say that this undermines the entire credibility and effectiveness of the government. This man, this former MP who is now a lord, someone who is supposed to be the pillar of our society, raped children. He raped children. 